Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, a bald explorer, and I'm out on another walk. The building behind me is the beautiful house that is Glyndebourne. And I'm taking a walk past my new car, this lovely Porsche. Uh, could you park it for me somewhere? There we are, lovely. What a nice gentleman he is. Uh, and I'm taking a walk up the hill uh, to get a view over Glyndebourne and have a look at it. Join me. The hill I'm going up is this hill over here with the sheep. There he goes in my uh, new porch. Uh, porch? Porsche even. 20 grand he said he's selling it for. Golly, there it goes. Um, Glyndebourne is on my left. Of course, it is the opera house where people come um, from all over the country to see some stunning performances. And there is a footpath. Uh, you can't actually park, unfortunately, in Glyndebourne to go and take advantage of this footpath. But at the moment, it's full of sheep. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to take this particular path because they're all going to be lambing very shortly. So there's the, uh, there's a bit of Glyndebourne behind me and you can see the sign car park set down deliveries but we are going through this kissing gate, always going through kissing gate and uh, taking this path westwards and looking somewhat nervous are the sheep in their woolly jumpers. I imagine that once they've, they've gone through the lambing process, they'll be shorn. Now that we are officially into spring, I'm recording this on the 21st, so it is actually the first day of spring. They're all feeding, drinking water, which is nice to see. And then I'm just gonna take this little stroll up here to see if we can get a, a view down onto the, uh, onto the opera house. I imagine that must be the theatre, that sort of conical shaped thing behind me. I've never actually been there myself, so it'll be interesting. It is quite, quite lovely walking through a field of sheep like this with these old, I'm guessing they're oak trees. They look uh, particularly sp Spartan at the moment. And then up there, I don't know what that is. Uh, beyond is a, a windmill, power generation windmill. I think it's part of the Glyndebourne estate actually. So whether they're, they're generating their own electricity. And I guess that little tower there must be a leading down into um, a water reservoir. That's what I'm guessing anyway. Beautiful up here, absolutely beautiful. So we'll take our it's only going to be a very short walk just up this little bit of hill through this field. I know that a lot of my viewers now, they tell me, many of them, they can't get out. That's such a shame. And so me meandering up hills and footpaths for them is a way of taking them with me. They get a glimpse of that feeling of going for a walk. And that's one of my ambitions is to be able to bring the beautiful countryside all over England to anybody, people in Britain, those who can't get out and about and those overseas. The sheep here are quite, quite content with me strolling past, which is good. And looking back here, I realise I'm not actually going to get much of a view of Glyndebourne itself from up here because uh, those trees in front of it but that's not too bad because the views are stunning absolutely stunning all around here now if I follow this footpath I will eventually get to Lewis um, Glynde the beautiful flinty village of Glynde with Glynde place and the magnificent church there, which uh, I think is 1765, dedicated to St. Mary, the, the Blessed Virgin, is sublime. I made a video on that, so go and check that one out if you get a chance. But this is, it's just staggering, isn't it? Down here on the 
the wonderful chalky South Downs. It is amazing in 10 minutes how far you can go on a very simple walk like I'm doing in real time coming up here to a little little bit of woodland I'm fascinated by trees and this year I'm recording this as I say in March 2018 and this year throughout the spring and summer and autumn I want to start to chart a lot of the trees and see um, them blossom and develop and then whatever sort of fruit we get from them. These are um, beautifully looked after trees and by looked after I, I really only mean that they're not polluted. You've got lichen on the branches. I don't know what these are in front of me. They might be um, holm trees. And then these, I think we've got a mixture here. They looks like some horse chestnut, some oak and some other. I'm not quite sure, maybe hazel in there. Getting a bit more of a view now as I climb up. I'm just going to go up to the gate above here and and then look back. The house that it all started at Glyndebourne, I don't really know the story, but um, it is an amazing story. I believe it is a love story that, uh, that kicked it off. And you probably know more about it than I do. I'm not terribly cultured when it comes to opera, but um, people come here, as I said before, from all over to a rural patch like this to see some fascinating and vibrant culture, which is just terrific. And, and of course, if those people come early, they can take in this beautiful countryside and have a bit of exercise at the same time. Here we go, look at this. Let's just come over here. We've got the sun out now and the vibrant colors. Look at these. I love this lichen or lichen. As People have been telling me that it's now, it's now pronounced lichen, as opposed to, as I was taught, lichen at school. But it is, um, it's, it's magnificent, I love it. Duck under here, nearly at the gate. We'll see what's beyond, see if we can get a view of Lewis. Passing some more oak trees. And uh, actually, are they oak? I don't know that it is oak. I'm looking on the ground for the leaves. It looks like beech. It can't be beech. Not quite sure now because there's no oak leaves. Yeah, these uh, they might be beech trees. That is a particularly knurled example. Clearly, I've got more work to do on the tree identification. Now, these look like beech over here, for sure, because they're smooth. We can't get to them, there's a fence, but let's go up a bit closer. They, look at that. Beech has what people call an elephant skin. Uh, it's sort of wrinkled, but smooth. And now, all enclosed off here get up to the gate that I was aiming to get for get to and we don't really get any more views but actually let's just cross over here a little bit more you can see in the distance a bit of chalk and round here in particular and in many bits around the South Downs, actually, chalk is um, the exposed chalk where they've been quarrying chalk. was so important. It wasn't terribly commercially successful because chalk is heavy. And, and the days before roads and proper transport, the days of um, horse and cart, you could only really transport a limited amount. But that said, um, the chalk is so useful for the land, for getting rid of the acid in the, in the ground. So farmers would use that for crops. Um, 
of course perfect for mortar and you'll see loads of houses infilled with the with the chalk we're getting the views up here now this is terrific this is absolutely stunning and um, of course also chalk used in the process of making cement and somewhere here are clay pits and the clay is dug out and that is also used for cement so anyway coming to the end now ladies and gentlemen but let's see if we can just get into that chalk pit ahead of me here it is coming up and we'll have a look at the chalk absolutely stunning and if I pan the camera around here climb up a little bit we get another view looking east that's looking east and this is looking south I seem to have got myself up on a bit of a ridge here so I have to get down again in a second we've had snow you wouldn't believe it would you we've had snow a few days ago all of this was covered in snow now as we're getting mid-march we get into the sun and we're getting the heat the spring is here and I'm utterly thrilled and here it is a little bit of a chalk quarry and all over the downs you'll find these all over them utterly amazing Let's just get a bit closer so you can appreciate it a lot of it has of course grown in now there may have been lime kilns here as they extracted the lime from the chalk it's uh, grassed over as you can see a lot of it but this was clearly a working quarry and here more of the exposed chalk we're just getting to it sorry to take a little extra of your time through this bracken or shrub and there it is it's amazing absolutely love it here we go uh, oops try not to drop the camera uh, there we go still a bit damp but uh, terrific ah, bit of chalk on me now so ladies and gentlemen from this chalk pit up above Glyndebourne thank you for joining me a little bit of a little bit of loose chalk just came down there we get the views one last time before I go if I don't slip over here and you can you can just see Glenmore just down there now in that little hollow but thank you very much it's been absolutely brilliant I will see you on the next one until then goodbye fantastic